Welcome back to FizzBuzz TDD. I have shifted the uh, display a little bit, showing more code, less IDE that we don't actually care about at the moment. We can still see line numbers, and we are using line testing to be able to continue to see that things are working, or that our tests are passing, and we haven't broken any of them, or when they're red, as we expect. So we have just refactored our name. We looked at how we could inline some things, how we could possibly use expression bodies. Things we're not going to do in today's example, or in this TDD example. But let's go ahead and get a second test in place. So one of the things I do while I'm testing is, as we can see on line 33 here, it's not compiling. We sure are letting us know that this method name already exists which is actually what I want right now. Because I want to write another test. And what I want to have happen is when I give fizzbuzz method the number two, I want to get the string two back. So now I've updated my test to be accurate. And now I've updated my test to be what I want, <coughs> but the method now doesn't reflect that. So we are going to rename our method. <coughs> Just the initial element. We, which is just the one we're currently working in. So FizzBuzz should return the string to given it one. And now it's a failing test. And we're going to make sure that the test is failing for the reason we expect. We expected two. The actual value is one, which is fantastic. That's exactly what we wanted. So now, now we need to update our production code, our method. And to do that, the idea is that we will, let me go and pull that back. The idea is that we will change the behavior of our method without changing any existing behavior. We want our new behavior to not affect any existing behavior. Because that allows us to roll back if we can't find a good solution in a short time frame. Here, <coughs> my other favorite technique of writing, of getting tests to pass is I know the value I'm providing in this test. I know input's going to be 2. What do I want back? I want 2 back. My test is expecting 2, so I'm just going to give it to it. Here's what you're asking me. Here's what I'm giving you. <coughs> and I my test passed. Now I can refactor. What do I have to refactor? Well, my name, I've got a decent name. It's better than foo. It's better than test two. So it's good enough for now. I don't know if it's the best name, but I'm doing this solo, and that has limitations to how clever I, or how well I can, how effectively I can name things. Um, so I'm okay with all of these. I'm never happy with the name input. Fizzbuzz is kind of an odd name, but I don't have a better one for now. So is there anything I can improve in my production code? Well, when I'm, when I'm refactoring, I'm looking for patterns. I'm looking for things that I can find a more general form of, uh, that I can combine into one way of doing it that covers a lot of cases. And here, while I may know the solution, I may know where I want to go, I don't have a pattern directing me there. It's not something I can see and <coughs> justify changing at this time. I need another test. <coughs> so let's go ahead and do that. Now one of the things one of the things that we can do uh, is because we know the requirements, because we know three is kind of handled as a special case, let's not write a test for three. Well, let's go to four. Now this is, we, while we want to play ignorant at times, we don't want to complicate things for us in the future. So by eliminating, by not using three, we don't actually create a test that will become invalid later. We're not always going to be able to avoid doing that because sometimes we just don't know. But in this case, we do know. So we can skip that. And when I give it four, I want four back. So let's go ahead and do another rename. Fizzbuzz should return the string four, given int four. Fantastic. Let's see what this does. It 
fails. Does it fail for the correct reason? We expected four, we got one back, so it does fail for the correct reason. Now I'm going to make my code pass. I know what it wants, I know what I give it, and I know what it wants. Bam! Our test now passes. Let's give it a slight pause while I make sure it worked. <clears throat> so it passes. And I can now refactor my code. <clears throat> and looking at this, I'm starting to see a pattern. Uh, one of the way I tend to look at my code follows Kent Beck's four rules of simple design. Uh, I'll, I'll recap those verbally very quickly, and, but please go look them up and read into them. I think they're a fantastic tool to help direct uh, how to cleaning up and improving code. Uh, first, the code works. Our tests pass. Uh, that Nothing else matters if the code doesn't work. The next is that things are effectively named or eloquently named. Really, we want our, the naming of things to communicate intent. We want them to communicate what they do. This gets towards that uh, an asp a thing, uh, idea you may have heard of, of self-documenting code. And that's, it drives towards that, where if something means something, we want it to communicate that. Then we want to do, don't repeat yourself. Uh, no, you know. No duplicates, don't repeat the code. And this is where we look for patterns. We look for things that are doing the similar thing and if there's a way we can remove the duplication. <clears throat> and Kent gets into uh, what he views duplication as, which I, I ascribe to. Duplication is things that will change for the same reason. If we have to change one, we're guaranteed to have to change the other. That's duplication. Code that just looks the same isn't always duplication. Can be, it's a high candidate for it, but not always. And the final of the four rules of simple design is fewest elements. Um, <clears throat> and this is really drives towards simple code. Uh, these are just summations, the actual bit that Kent has written. Uh, there, there's paragraphs on each. The each could probably have their own book and may have their own book. but Quick summation is test pass, conveys intent, don't repeat yourself, fewest elements. Or simple. I prefer simple, but fewest elements just keeps getting said a lot. All right, so here I see a pattern. When my input's a value, I return the string form of that. Well, there's, there's a uh, <clears throat> simple way to do this. Uh, string interpolation. No. Um, I'm just seeing if my tool actually has any way to be smart enough about what I'm doing, and it doesn't, understandably. Um, <clears throat> but I know offhand, so I know this is a pattern. And what I'm going to do for this pattern is I'm actually going to not change my existing code because we never want to do that. Well, not never, never, but I'm refactoring, so I don't want to change the existing code. Uh, if my input's equal to four, or my input's equal to two, then maybe I return the string form of the input. Now you're like, you're probably saying, well, duh, that's what we do. But we're getting there by triangulation, by showing the pattern exists and proving that the pattern works for our tests. So we still have green check marks on line 61 and 62 re reflecting these two if statements. So they're getting hit, and, and no tests are breaking on those, but are, are they actually, are they returning my value for my two tests, or is this line? Easy way to check, let's remove it. Now all our tests are still passing. And we can see here that one, we know our input is one, because uh, that's the test, we do see the test, we don't have to be completely ignorant about how the system is behaving. Uh, <coughs> So we know that we are returning the string one for int one. And we can also do, so now if we up, up update this to return string, the input one, we're returning the string. Now we can see here on line 62 by this uh, dash, it's covered by zero tests. All of our tests are getting covered by this line. 
Now I can continue to add more specific cases for every number I can think of, but that's just kind of silly. I can see the pattern of when I get a number, I return the string form. So uh, I can just drop that. And here we have <clears throat> a simple, a general form of what we were having specific instances of. We have triangulated a more general solution, which, I, which is what we want to do with CDD. So now that I'm passing and I've refactored my code without changing behavior, and that's why we did very stepwise demonstration of each of our changes. We confirmed the behavior we were expecting remained the same as we're changing things. Now, I want to make it, cl it clear these were not safe refactors uh, in that the tool was making them for us. We had to write the code to refactor it. So it's refactoring, but it's an... Uh, it's refactoring with tests, so we know that the behavior we know of is the same, but it is not an automated or a truly safe refactoring. There is a distinction, and Arlo's Git notation uh, will get, show that a bit, and I will show that in a future video. But for now, let's recognize that we were refactoring with tests, which is a safe, which is a the way we want to refactor, the only way we can manually write code safely, and with assurance that we're doing the right thing. So we're a little over 10 minutes, so I'm going to stop this clip of FizzBuzz by TDD, uh, where we've fully implemented our first requirement. Only took us like 25 minutes. Fabulous. Okay. Uh, I, I'll, I will end this here, and I will continue to do TDD and demonstrate as we work through and change and implement FizzBuzz with future videos.